Welcome back everyone. This is video nine in the series, An Introduction to Land Administration. And in this video, we'll be talking about land rights and land tenure. But isn't land tenure the same thing as land administration? No, that is a common mistake that many people make. Many people use land management, land governance, and land administration interchangeably. Land administration is not just another word for land tenure. As we've seen in the previous sessions, land administration is broader than land tenure. Absolutely, Royce. In fact, this is central to our argument about what we need to do about building land administration in order to strengthen tenure. By focusing way too much on land tenure forms, um, or the systems without the dimension of landed administration, it's like presenting a one dimensional view of a problem. We're arguing that we need to understand land tenure in the context of the three dimensional model, almost like the idea of a house. Addressing land tenure without the administrative infrastructure is like looking at a house without the ceiling, the roof, the floor, the foundations, and with only a wall or just a pillar. Another good metaphor that helps to illustrate the distinction between land administration and land tenure is to think about a road network and why we have one. A road network includes a variety of roads, such as national or provincial roads, highways, city streets, municipal roads and gravel roads. This infrastructure is interlinked despite being so varied. It allows a great variety of vehicles to travel on them for different purposes, such as cars, minibus taxis, trucks, tractors, buses, articulated vehicles, bicycles, motorbikes, and so on. Some vehicles have single occupants and others carry multiple So occupants. the road network is like the land administration system and the vehicles are different forms of land tenure, for example, freehold, collective ownership, leasehold, rental, sectional title, servitude, occupational rights, and so on. Uh, okay, so let me get this straight. The different forms of land tenure that you just listed are like different types of cars, trucks, and other vehicles, and they need the infrastructure of a land administration system to enable them to do their business. Without the land administration infrastructure, uh, land tenure can't go anywhere, like a car without a road. Yes, exactly. The important point of this metaphor, and of course, no metaphor is perfect, is that different land tenure vehicles are like motor vehicles that need an appropriate level of infrastructure to ride on. All right, that's clear for me, and I hope it's clear for you as well. But I've got one more question. How do rights fit into the picture? I'll take this one. Land rights. I want you to think for a moment about where you are right now watching this video. Hopefully you're sitting somewhere comfortable and you might even have something nice to drink with you. You might be watching from home, an office, a coffee shop, anywhere really. And wherever you are, I want you to think about this question. What gives you the right to be where you are doing what you were doing at this moment. Wherever you are, you're probably occupying a small piece of, piece of land, probably about one square meter, and somehow it is okay for you to be there. You hopefully hold legitimate right to use that space, even if you were sitting on a ship somewhere out at sea, or somewhere up in space on an international space station. You are occupying a space and someone has said, that is okay. This is the essence of land rights. Land rights may be defined as rights to occupy, use, and transact in land, including rights to exclude others from exercising such rights and rights to enforce protection of the rights holder. To quote Fisher and Whittle, a right refers to what the holder can do with the thing or what the holder can prevent others from doing. Hence, a land right is held by a person or people who have legitimate rights of access and particular rights or restrictions of use and transmission. And hence, we say, a land right determines what can be done with the land. 
Typically, this may be the right to occupy the land or use it for agricultural or grazing purposes or a right to access or the right to collect firewood or harvest water, etc. It also includes the right to bequeath or sell the land and it may include restrictions on such rights. Land rights are not actually recognized as human rights under international law and yet they constitute the basis of the rights such as, you know, access to food, housing and development. The onus rests on country-specific land administrators as duty bearers to ensure that land rights are realized, protected and enforced. In advanced economies and urban areas, use rights are usually spatially regulated by zoning laws, meaning there are determinations such as residential, trading and industrial zones and clear restrictions on what you cannot do in those zones. In the commercial farming areas, subdivision of land is not allowed without consent in order to prevent too much fragmentation. It is waived in some land reform situations or for permitted land developments. Some rights were issued directly for a particular use, such as the former permission to occupy or right to occupy in the rural parts of South Africa. The PTOs were issued for residential, trading, church, school, and arable land. A church PTO cannot be used for plowing your own land, while an arable PTO cannot be used to build a school. To change the land use, you would have had to apply for a new and entirely different PTO. In the formal legal system that is governed by Roman Dutch law, Ownership is a type of land right registered in the deeds registry that gives the holder of the right the fullest use of the land subject to some applicable restrictions. However, people who hold other legal rights in South Africa, such as customary rights, often say, I own this land, even when there isn't a registered right, because they do have a legitimate right recognized in law. Thus, ownership is often the way that many rights holders of unregistered land rights describe their own rights, including labor tenants, sharecroppers, and customary landholders. This conveys their conviction of a permanent right. Under apartheid, many people such as these were prevented from owning land in the legal sense of registration. However, since 94, land laws such as the Interim Protection of Informal Land Rights Act 31 of 1996, known as APILRA, and the Restitution of Land Rights Act 22 of 1994, recognize long-standing occupation called beneficial occupation as a land right. APILRA states that the rights of beneficial occupation cannot be dispossessed by any other means except for expropriation. This means that under appeal rub, informal rights holders have rights to immovable property, such as land in the buildings attached thereto, which are categorized as beneficial occupation. Notably, the Constitutional Court has found in various cases that such land rights may be considered a kind of common law ownership. Hence, we have to be very careful with how we use the word ownership because it conveys such different meanings to different people. Land tenure refers to how the right is held. Adam Sabanda and Turner define land tenure as the terms and conditions on which land is held, used, and transacted. Land tenure is all about the T's and C's. If you lease land for pasture, your right to graze your cattle is determined by the terms and conditions of the lease, most notably your obligation to pay your rent. If you use land for pasture and the conditions of customary tenure, your right is determined by the rules, norms, and traditions of the community. Typically, it does not allow for selling, but customary rights are transmitted intergenerationally through kinship. In general, your right may be taken away if you break the rules. The FAO, that's the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, defines land tenure as the relationship, whether legally or customarily defined, among people as individuals or groups with respect to land. 
this definition identifies land tenure in terms of relations between people and about things. In other words, as a social or property relationship. It is worth noting that this relationship can be defined by formal law or by custom. The legal approach recognizes the formal statutory identification of land rights as specified in law. This includes the allocation and security of land rights through land surveying and registration, land transfers, and the management of boundary and access disputes and valuation. The customary approach focuses on customary rules, which are those that are validated by community or family consent regarding rights of use and access. It is like unofficial law that is widely practiced and regarded as locally legitimate. Like any rules, the rules of land tenure reflect the balance of power among people with an interest in land. Changes to these rules may result in a fundamental shift in existing power structures. An example is the number of years that are stipulated before you can claim a right of what's called beneficial occupation. The longer the period of time before you can stake a claim, the more exclusive the tenure system is. What that means is in formal property systems, if you use land without the consent of the owner, voluntarily, openly, and without force, for 30 years or more, you can claim the right by what's called prescription. For the purpose of this series, and drawing from the previous discussion, we will define land tenure as the terms and conditions by which individuals or groups may hold, use, transact, or defend their land rights. So to sum up what we've been saying in this video, land rights relate to what you can do with land, including disposing of it through sale or inheritance, and including stopping other people from doing things on your land like trespassing. Land tenure relates to how you hold that right, whether it is held in a title deed, a lease, a servitude, a PTO, or through customarily recognized rules. Land administration provides the infrastructure that supports land tenure. In the next video, we will look deeper into the different types of land rights and tenure systems and introduce the concept of a continuum of land rights.